I want to avoid my application adding duplicates, we have adding duplicate data. Is it better to do a check before the insert or convert? That's a, I think that's a typo, convert. Okay, so is it better to do a check before the insert or convert the insert to insert select and add a not exist clause? And my response is neither and both. And let's explore that. We've got a, a couple of things to explore here. Various ways you can look at in terms of avoiding or making sure you don't get duplicate data. So we're going to start with one, obviously, very important caveat first. Let's create a table called T. Insert um, 100,000 rows, but they're even. You can see it's row num times two. So effectively, I've got two, four, six, eight, ten, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So just all the even numbers. If I'm, going to, if I'm going to test to see if I'm going to insert a row, I'm going to, I'm going to try and insert 1001. Here's option one. Let's see if it's there first. If it's not, then go insert it. And this is my first word of warning because sadly, we still see a lot of this around. Here's the second session using the same logic. I'm going to see if 1001 is there. It's not, which means I can insert it. And as you can see, that's a problem because... You know, I've got one row inserted here, one row inserted here. I've got a duplicate, even though I tried to check that there weren't. Rule number one is if you are worrying about duplicates, you must have a unique key or a primary key, depending on the column definition, to ensure that that's not going to be the case. The concept of just checking and then inserting in any way, shape or form only holds true if you have the underlying database constraints to back it up. If you haven't, you're heading into data corruption street no matter what you do. So that's that's the sort of standard warning I always give. With that in mind, let's now proceed. So I'll roll back that change. Let's put a primary key on. So we know that the database is enforcing uniqueness now. With that in place, what's the best way to load data in and not have duplicates go in there, but keep it nice and performant? Here's our first test. Our first test is do the two operations. If I'm going to insert 200,000 rows, first see if it's there, and if it's not there, then do an insert. And it takes four and a half seconds. So the question is, can we do better? I'm, I'm of the school of thought, and, and a lot of people are, that you really shouldn't do this kind of stuff anyway, because even if you do this check, by the time you finish that check, someone else may have inserted it anyway. And so this isn't guaranteed not to give you an error. This is a, a false confidence. Um, and so this is indeed the case. So I'll recreate the demo, exact same thing. We should do it this way. Try to an insert. And if you get a dupe val index, then null. In this case, I'm ignoring it. You could raise an error, etc. But always do that because you have to, even if you do a count beforehand, you must always be worried about getting these duplicates anyway. And this is valid advice. But notice how long it took. So the original one took, what was it, four seconds, five seconds? This one took 20 seconds. If you are expecting lots and lots of duplicates, this concept here, is very expensive. If you actually throw a trace in this, what happens is it's an error. You didn't insert, you got an error. In your trace file, you have a thing that says a break and a reset. The database goes, oh, something went wrong. Let's sort of you know, get ourselves all sorted out and proceed onwards. Let's roll back that transaction and, and go, or roll back that statement and go. Handling an error is pretty expensive. So be aware that if you are expecting duplicates, then this is going to cost you. If you're expecting none, then things will be better. If, you, if you're planning on duplicates, then yeah, just simply going, well, I'll just catch it and ignore it. It's going to cost you a lot in terms of performance. Let's recreate the demo once again, same rows, same primary key, et cetera, and look at another option. This is converting an insert into select where not exists. Don't get me wrong. I've been lazy here in the code. You still need to handle the dupe valon index if this was a real multi-user system. In simplest form here, you can see we're now getting a significant performance boost. This is faster than doing the select count and then the check, and it's way faster than just handling dupes with an error. So now we're down to 3.8 seconds. Even though you're thinking, well, this seems redundant given that I've got the constraint in place anyway, that check is generally faster than just relying on the error handler. So be aware of that. You're effectively avoiding that database doing a break and a reset as, as many times as you can. You might still get it occasionally if you're a multi-user system, but this way you're minimizing the occurrences of that. And so it's quite fast. Let's recreate the demo and look at another option. One of the cool things we've had for a long time is the merge command can be broken up into fragments. 
you don't have to do an update. So in this case, I'm doing merge using select from jewel. If it's not matched, then do an insert. And I just simply bypass the match thing. Once again, it's about the same speed as doing the count first and then insert. It's not as fast as the insert not exists, but if you've got co-generators that like generating merge, then merge is also a candidate that's going to actually run reasonably well. Recreate the demo again looks at another option. There's a hint that was actually originally designed for addition-based redefinition, but it can be used anywhere. The cost is you need to know the table and you need to know the name of the actual unique constraint that you're looking to avoid violation. But this one gets you very close to the same speed as the insert where not exists. It simply is doing an insert and simply trying to stuff rows in there. That's one you can do. I'm generally not a fan of hints, but maybe this is an exception in the sense that it's fairly self-explanatory. The risk here is what if someone renames your constraint, then that's just going to absolutely blow up. There's, there's no error handling there. You might have something like, I'll put this in here and as well have the dupe balance index. But then you have the interesting thing of rather than just catering for you know, boundary cases there where you've got maybe just a few, in this case, you could get tens of thousands and get back into that performance nightmare we saw before with dupe balance index. So just something to be aware of. That's why this one's maybe a little bit more risky. Let's recate the demo. This is the same example, but this time I'm getting no errors. So I've deliberately chosen the numbers where this will never happen. And we're pretty much close to just standard insert speed. If the ex expectation is duplicates being very rare, then this is going to be fine. Just your standard insert, cache the duplicate. But if there's going to be a high overlap between your incoming data and the uh, existing data, then put an existence check in as well. Even though you have to have the exception handler, do that check first. It's going to be much, much faster.